How's it going, tricks and mates? This is Mr. Drew Charles, and we're here. We'll seduce me to the demon war. And I don't see much war at the moment. I see this weird love story where we're making toys and crap. Everything's too good to be true. Oh, wait, what did we say? Is it the same thing, anyway? No way it's cute. Damien stared and shocked at me, but I was being serious. It didn't matter that Damien was a man. Cute toys were cute for a reason, and it was okay to think so. Having cute toys is not a bad thing at all. That's what some toys are meant to be. Cute. It doesn't matter who has them or how old you are. Cute is cute. Yeah, I like cute. It was just a fact to me. However, Damien couldn't help but chuckle softly before bringing one hand to my head and penning over my hair. You are so adorable, you know that? Yay! He called me adorable. I'm still dreading what my boyfriend is going to think when he sees one of these videos. He's going to murder me. One day, I'm going to go around his, he's going to have that video ready, and his, he's, go, he's going to have his arms crossed, like... And then he'll bring a knife out. I'll be dead. <laughs> Something like that's going to happen, I bet. Uh huh? I blushed and looked down at the breakfast tray in front of us. I wasn't that cute. I felt myself rub the back of my neck in embarrassment. Shush! That made Damien laugh and kiss my cheek, forcing a gasp to come out of me. I looked at Damien as he smiled a playful grin at me. It's true. Oh, stop! He said, that was cool. The music left. We both turned back to the TV and listened as James explained each toy in detail. I looked over to Damien to see him practically enthralled with the sights of his brother presenting his line. I gently nudged him, making him look back to me. Jeez, you're making me jealous. It's like James is enthralling you through the TV to buy his toys. I, of course, was joking. Damien was very happy for his brothers, especially James. It's really weird someone else having the same name as me. I haven't had that in ages. With a raised eyebrow, Damien gently removed the tray from our laps, placing on his nightstand before crawling over my body and making me lay back. I stared up at him in surprise, and he gave me a seductive smirk. And what if I was enthralled by you? Oh no. Uh, uh, yeah, that's kind of how I'm reacting at the moment. I was speechless. Damien was full of surprises, even as a human. He didn't have the ability to read my mind, but he knew exactly what to say to make me squirm. How was he this good? He was human now. We're gonna see a penis. Can't really show the, the next scene if there's a penis. Damien chuckled before leaning down and kissing me. Ooh. Despite him not being a demon anymore, his kisses were always so magical. They each took my breath away each time his lips touched mine. I loved them. I wrapped my arms around him, deep in the kisses between us, forgetting about what was going on with his toy line. All I could think about was Damien's kiss. It was sweet and passionate, eager to make my body quiver underneath the one kissing me. However, the sound of our stomachs rumbled in sync, forcing us to break away from the kiss and look down at our touching bellies. <laughs> Maybe we should eat a bit before we continue this, huh? Oh my god. Eat me! You're not a demon anymore, but cannibalism's fine with me if it's romantic. Good idea, haha. Haha. -ha. Kiss me! As much as I wanted to keep making out with Damien, I knew my stomach would keep interrupting, and so would his unless we ate. We ate the delicious breakfast Damien made whilst watching the rest of the news. What did I have for breakfast? I know it's such a small detail, but what if I had something horrible? What if Damien brought us a cooked heart? And what if I, he did that and no one knew? What if he took the heart of a child next door, cooked it, and served it on a plate? None of us would know. I just find that unnerving. It was a nice segment and Matthew even appeared to help during James's presentation. Soon we were flipping channels and watching random shows. The day passed by lazily. We barely left the bedroom because we just didn't want to do anything. It was rather relaxing, surprisingly. I knew we had to work on the wedding arrangements eventually, but today was not the day for that. We needed a day to ourselves to remind each other that we were going to be together for a long time. It wasn't long before we found ourselves cuddling into each other's arms, taking a mid-afternoon nap. It was a sweet and peaceful drowsiness that lured both of us to close our eyes together. Oh, we're sleeping together again. That's our life now. Oh. The darkness of my mind invited me to stay a while and I gladly accepted his invitation. 
It felt nice, and I was enjoying the rest it gave my body. However, I soon saw that I was not alone in the dark. Those eyes don't look human, and this music sounds adventurous yet menacing. Damien slowly appeared before me and took my hand, kissing it gently. I felt myself shudder, but it wasn't his nude form or his kiss that surprised me. It was his eyes. My mind recognized his eyes, shivers shooting up my body from the sight. Instead of the loving and soft blue and purple his eyes usually were, they were a deep gold. They bore into my soul as Damien continued to keep his lips on my hand. I think gold eyes is a characteristic of demons. To Damien? <laughs> oh, is he being a bad boy now? As Damien smote against my skin, my body began to feel hot, making me curl into my body. I tried to pull my hand away from him, but he held it firmly, keeping his lips against my skin over my knuckles. I don't mind a bit of bad boy. The, this is your opinion, unless he, like, domestically abused me before. Gan, no! I recognized the feeling. He was enthralling me. Why was he doing this in my dream? Why was this happening? We continued to float in the darkness, his enthrallment invading my body as he held my hand to him still. Wait, so are we being raped or... I had to make him let go, I had to. Stop! I th oh no, really, this went bad direction quickly. I finally was able to pull my hand away, and I held it close to my chest. Damien stared in shock before something dark covered my eyes. Look out! Diana? Huh? From out of nowhere, Diana's voice rang through the air, falling by the sounds of an intense battle. I looked around the darkness, unsure of what was going on, but something did not feel right. As I stood, lost in the dark, I felt a heavy weight upon my back, forcing me down. It was as if a large boulder was pressing down on me, wanting to crush me beneath its weight. I fought against it, gritting my teeth as I struggled. A large grunt echoed over me, forcing me to look up and see Diana pushing at the boulder to get it off me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Why would Diana ever help me? Oh, this is like a battlefield, doesn't it? Look, nice sunshine, uh, throne room, a nice rug, empty. Uh, you know what? This kind of looks like, well, A, it looks like a th a nice peaceful day, and B, it actually looks like a set for one of my stories. So yeah, I don't know why I mentioned that, I just wanted to. Quickly, we both forced it off of my body, and soon I found myself looking into the great hall of the Incubi's old castle in the Abyssal Plains. The interior was as regal as I remembered, but behind me was a broken down entrance where I assumed the boulder had originated from. However, Diane and I were not alone. Is it the demon man? Is she alright? Is she? I wouldn't worry about her, you mistake. That's a bit harsh. Also, I love how Damien came with those clothes on. The exact same clothes. Okay, so I, is this the same demon? Is this the father or is this the other demon? I stared as the demon lord and Damien stood squared off with each other. In the demon lord's hand was a large chain covered in dry blood. And my stomach churned at the sight. I don't see any chain. Do you see any chain? I see horns. I see a grumpy man. She will never leave this world alive as long as I live. Why is the voice acting so good? I actually did enjoy Damien. I enjoyed Damien's voice. Actually, no. I enjoyed everyone's voice acting. But he just sounds kind of weird to me. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he growls and his face is smiling. Oh, uh, that, that's beautiful. I, I, lo I love it my stories with a bit of cheese. I looked at Damien, then back at the Demon Lord. What was going on? Why was Diana here? Why was I here? Why am I here? As the Demon Lord whipped his chain at Damien, Diana shot out a blast of purple energy, forcing it to ricochet away. Diana stepped in front of me and Damien, glaring hard at the Demon Lord and preparing another spell in her hands. So, wait, is she on our Go side now? I'll deal with this once and for all. Okay. I'm going to fall here. All of you will fall with me. So, is this a redemption story for Diana? Is she on our side now? The demon lord, with a crazed grin, pointed his hand towards the ceiling and let out an angry howl, causing tremors and quakes to run through the room. Diana shot her hands upward and formed a purple barrier around her body, but she winced with each stone that fell and slammed into the barrier. I, I can't hold it. Oh no! 
That was a cool laugh. Yeah, um, Damien's like, what the fuck? And Diana's just like, bitch, please. My instinct was to reach out and hold on to Damien, but before I could move, he grabbed my face and kissed me roughly. I stared at him, wondering what he was doing, but I kissed him back and dug my fingers into his shoulders. Was this dream going to end with us dying? You know, again, it's only a dream. We can get a psychiatrist for this. As Damien pulled away, I saw tears begin to form in his eyes. I stared as he gently pulled away from me and ran outside of Diana's barrier at the Demon Lord, picking up a fallen sword from the ground. <gasps> With a courageous shout, Damien slashed at the demon lord, forcing him to quickly jump backwards towards the throne. Keep her safe. Oh! What? Are you insane? You're powerless against him. Uh well, now he's human. Then yeah, kind of, but still. You're faster than me as a demon, I won't be able to get out of here fast enough for us both to survive. Are you sacrificing himself? Does that mean I have to become a lesbian after this, Damien? I wasn't sure what was happening, but I didn't like what I was seeing. Why was Damien telling Diana to keep me safe? I watched as Damien looked at Diana with an affirmative glare and nod. Oh, and Diana disappeared. Before I could question it, Diana ducked down and threw me over her shoulder. How she managed to be strong enough to perform such a feat was beyond me, but I was too thrown off to care. He will not be forgotten. Of course he won't. He's, he's my guy, and this is only a dream. Just go. Okay. I reached out to Damien, losing track of what was happening. As Diana began to run away from him and the demon lord faster than a speeding car. Good simile. Damien! Damien! Yeah, that's my scream for missing my guy. I love you. I love you too, my love. Oh, we didn't even say I love you too. Or oh, were we trying to be epic in this scene? I watched the tears run down Damien's cheeks. No tears! As he reached back for me, but he remained where he stood. As Diana ran with me over her shoulder, the ceiling began to crumble within the hall, stone and glass falling around the demon lord and Damien. The world around me began to go into slow motion as I kept reaching out to Damien, struggling Diana's arms as she ran. Why was this happening? I could only watch as the demon lord approached Damien and quickly wrapped the chain around his neck, putting him into the air and hanging him with it like an executioner's noose. Damien tried to place his feet onto the demon lord whilst his fingers clawed at the chain, trying to find some purchase. As he managed to get his feet around the demon lord's neck, a large avalanche of stone and glass fell over their bodies, hiding them from sight. I couldn't be sure, but it looked as if they had been crushed. No! It's a dream! Or oh, what if this is the future? What well, this is a foreshadow? The world around me broke apart as I began to scream in agony at what I was a force to witness. It couldn't have been real. I didn't want it to be real. I let the darkness of my dreams envelop me as I mentally repeated over and over that this was not real. Once again, I was floating in darkness, curling into myself in overwhelming sadness. Why was this happening? Why was I being forced to see nightmare after nightmare? I dug my nails into my arms, wanting to wake up already. Please let me wake up, please. As I felt my body begin to fall, I let go of my arms and tried to reach for something to stop my rapid descent. Ah! Seems very real for a dream now. Faster and faster, I felt my body tumble and fall through the dark into an unknown oblivion. I tried to grasp at anything to catch me, to stop me. I eventually woke up, holding on to Damien as I refocused my vision. I was back in my room. Wait, did the day already end before then? Or is it just the middle of the night and this is when we wake up now? Because we really didn't do anything that other day, did we? I had landed and awoken before I felt the impact. Or perhaps the impact woke me up. My grip on his shirts woke Damien from his sleep, gasping and looking to me. Gah, what happened? What's wrong? Damien! Oh, Damien, I had a nightmare. Oh, it's made of metal. Sorry, I thought that shuttle was made of wood. Okay, the, the bookcase is still weird and I still don't know if that's a tap or not. I instinctively wrapped my arms around him, needing to feel him physically. It wasn't enough to see or hear him, but the feeling of his body being in my arms reassured my mind that he was okay and that he was here with me alive. Damien looked at me and wrapped his arms around me, letting out a small sigh and nuzzling me softly. Another yes. I could only nod against his shoulder. I was quavering in his arms, but I was thankful that everything was okay. My dream was just that, a dream. I sighed and kissed his cheek softly, silently apologizing. Damien held me close for such a long time, understanding my need to simply feel him. He didn't pull away, nor did he speak. 
He simply held me and gently nuzzled me to help me fully come down from my fear. I felt his hand gently pluck my hair, aiding my shift from sadness to a relaxing calm. Everything was fine. Everything was okay. I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep getting nightmares. I can't control your dreams. I still think a psychiatrist would help. I don't care what anyone in this game says. My memories flash back to the first time he said that to me. It was the day right after we met. He had saved me from my nightmare of Malix. I let a smile cross my cheeks as I looked up at Damien. Gee, it would help if, if Damien was a demon again, wouldn't it? Oh wait, he sacrificed that for us. Heh, you told me that when we first met. Damien gently pulled away and smiled at me, kissing my cheek. I did, didn't I? You remember that? Of course I do. Well, she remembers that, I don't. I nodded. I never wanted to forget how we had met. He and his brothers came to the human world and arrived in my house, where I got to be with them and learn about them. At the same time, I was able to become close to Damien and fall in love with him. Yes, there were some bumps along the way, but we were able to get through them. We even were able to give Damien something he desperately wanted, to be human. Damien gently caressed my cheek, inviting me to nuzzle into his palm, and he smiled down at me as he laid his forehead against mine. No matter what comes our way, I promise to protect you and love you for the rest of my life. Oh, I love you too, Damien. Now let's have dream sex. You'll never leave me? Damien shook his head and I believed him. His simple smile was enough for me to understand that he was telling the absolute truth. He wouldn't leave me and I would never leave him. I nuzzled my nose to his, looking up to his beautiful eyes. You don't regret not being a demon anymore? He shook his head again. I knew he was beyond happy to be human, but the nightmares made me worry over and over without relenting. I knew it was worrying over nothing. I knew it was worrying over nothing. It's fine. To be fair, three parts in and not one hour was pretty good. So it's, I knew I was worrying over nothing. But more than anything else, I wanted Damien to be happy. I couldn't help but worry. I slowly tilted my head up and captured his lips with mine, kissing him ever so softly. He returned my kiss, his arms tightening around my body. My worries slowly began to melt and drift away as he held me. I could feel my body slowly draw closer to Damien's, craving more of his touch. My fingers gently traveled up his shoulders and ran through his hair, brushing through the strands lovingly. He shivered at my touch, making me tremble in response. The thing was, I had just woken up from a nightmare. Was it right to feel like this right now? My mind questioned my body's intentions and my body ignored every logical reason my mind had to put a stop to the situation. I had to listen to one or the other. Oh. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is... We have schizophrenia, because technically when someone thinks that the body and the mind are two separate things, it's a form of schizophrenia, I think. Uh, I will leave this for the next episode. It's a really, I am enjoying this game. I like the story and stuff. I mean, technically nothing's happened except we slept. And even then, the dreams didn't really have anything to do with the plot. But on the other hand, I really like the guy we're being set up with. So I'm not going to diss that. we got one more episode left. Um, not sure when I'll pick up the game again, as normal. But you know what? It's still been an enjoyable experience. So without further ado, look out for my book, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, see ya!